First up this evening, Dr. Anna Beck. Anna Beck, MD, is the Director of Supportive Oncology and Survivorship. She is also an investigator at the Huntsman Cancer Institute, all while molding the minds of students as an Associate Professor of Medical Oncology at the University of Utah School of Medicine. Along with that, she has given 20 years as a community oncologist. Dr. Anna's areas of expertise include female cancers, communication skills training, and end-of-life care. Being the director of supportive oncology and survivorship, her goal is to broaden the spectrum of support available for cancer patients and their caregivers throughout the process of a cancer diagnosis. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Anna Beck. So thank you, Terry, and thank you, Phil, for asking me to be a part of this event once again. Um, it's always a pleasure and an honor to be invited um, and to maybe share my experiences, uh, both as a cancer survivor and also as a, a health care provider who takes care of cancer survivors. So um, I thought that probably the one word that I wanted to sort of leave you guys with tonight is the word resiliency because I think resiliency is really the key towards having a meaningful survivorship and recovering from cancer. You know, when you're diagnosed with cancer, it's a real showstopper. You know, you, you kind of live your life thinking that you are going to, you know, meet a special someone, finish school, have a family, not necessarily in this order, but you know. Um, and you save money, you know, you save money for retirement and you save money for uh, college, you save money for spring break. Um, it, all of those things just tend to completely get blown out of the water when somebody says to you, you've got cancer. Um, so I, I think what I wanted to propose is that the way out of all of that is to develop a sense of resiliency. And I thought I would share with you some stories from some of the survivors that I know who are dear to my heart and how they have developed their sense of resiliency. Um, these are, uh, all three of these women are patients of mine and they've all given me permission and actually they're very happy to, to let me share their story. So the first one is a woman named Kate who's a nurse who was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer several years ago when she was a very young woman. Um, and this was before Kate was married. She was dating a special someone. But for her, it, you know, a big part of her diagnosis was the loss of her self, sense of self-image because of her breast cancer diagnosis. So it's now seven, seven or so years down the road, and Kate comes in with her husband, whom she was dating at the time, and she was so excited because she had connected with a tattoo artist. And together, the two of them had created this incredibly beautiful tattoo that stretched from her back all the way around her side and to the front and covered her reconstructed breast. And Kate was so happy and so proud of this. She couldn't wait to show me and anybody else who wasn't able to get out of the way um, to see this beautiful, I mean, it was really a work of art. And I'll never forget what Kate said to me. She said, I have recaptured this part of my body. It now belongs to me. So what Kate did was she used art to help her recapture her sense of her self-image. And with that came a, bolst, or a boost to her sense of self-confidence. So I, I, that's one skill I want to I wanna try to share with you. The second was a woman, is a woman named Jan. Jan is a three-time cancer survivor. She had melanoma twice and ovarian cancer. Um, the last time where I met her and when Jan was in the throes of her treatment and she was feeling so miserable one of the things that helped her reconnect with her sense of feeling worthwhile was her passion for the theater so she finished her treatment and she she decided to go to work on that she actually started a theater school and a theater production company as part of this theater production company um, she invites members of the community to nominate a patient who has cancer with their families. They highlight this patient at their performance. They have 12 performances a year. It's called Hope Box Theater. As part of being highlighted, the patient gets pictures of themselves put up and their family members. They actually are written into the production, so they get to be a part of the production. It may be that they are on stage or maybe it's helping with set design, whatever they feel comfortable with. 
the night of one of the nights of their performance, they and their families are brought to the theater. They're treated like royalty. They're given lots of gifts, and they get all of the proceeds from the show that night. So this is one way that Jan has taken her passion um, and used that to rebuild her life, to, to inject meaning into her life, and to also give back to others. The third story is a woman named Kirsten, and Kirsten um, was diagnosed with breast cancer, and she had another day job, but after she went through her diagnosis and kind of struggled with how to rebuild her life, she realized that one of the things that she learned was what it, what it took for other people to help her feel better with her diagnosis. And you know that's something that, for those of you who are, are supporting a cancer survivor, I think one of the hardest things to do is to figure out what you can do that will make that cancer survivor feel better again. So Kirsten thought back on this experience, and she realized that the things that made her feel better were those little special gestures that made her feel worthwhile and loved and remembered and cared for. So based on that, Kirsten has now started an online company called Uplift Gifts. And this is a company that's designed to provide special gifts that can be tailored for any woman who's, who is in the midst of a crisis for any reason. So maybe it's a diagnosis of cancer. Maybe it's a diagnosis of something else. Maybe it's the loss of a pet or a loved one. Maybe it's a divorce. But in any case, it's, it's, it's Kirsten's way of crafting a... a um, a tool so that those people who are trying to support somebody who is going through a tough time have a way of doing it, have a way of connecting. Uh, and by establishing that connection, she's supporting her um, these uh, women who are wrestling with tough times. So those are three examples. And back to my word, resiliency. So how does all of this fit together? So with Kate, her resiliency came from recapturing her self-image, and through that, she developed her self-confidence again. You can establish self-confidence in so many ways. For Jan, it was reconnecting with something that gives her passion in life and also giving back to the community. And for Kirsten, it was being able to reach out and establish connections with people that matter. And it's those kinds of relationships that give you support and help you get through tough times. So that's it. That's my message tonight. Resiliency. You guys, you rock it, okay? Thanks so much.